November the first, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 15. And the side that we are on spiritually is as a family. One family we dwell in him, one church above, beneath. Though now divided by the stream, the narrow stream of death, one army of the living God, to his command we bow. Part of his host has crossed the flood, and part is crossing now. See Wesley. Now, if we look at the Greek or any other language of the earliest versions of any of the biblical or side to the Bible texts, we find that Jesus didn't say anything equivalent to church, but we do find throughout the Bible this idea of temple, as in the establishment of something on earth that's representative and referential to something beyond materially cosmic. Let us then learn that we can never be lonely or forsaken in this life. Shall they forget us because they are made perfect? Shall they love us the less because they now have power to love us more? If we forget them not, shall they not remember us with God? No trial then can isolate us, no sorrow can cut us off from the communion of saints. Kneel down, and you are with them. Lift up your eyes, and the heavenly world, high above all perturbation, hangs serenely overhead. Only a thin veil, it may be, floats between. All whom we loved, and all whom loved us, whom we still love no less. While they love us yet more, are ever near because ever in his presence, in whom we live and dwell, H.E. Manning. Now, who loved us is often something that people project, um, idealism and all that. But the spiritual realms overlap these material realms. rather than being something distant and unreachable from Earth.